please stand? Let us begin this ceremony tonight with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless this time together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time to gather together to worship or to just witness this union tonight. Lord, we come together tonight to celebrate the joining of these two individuals as they become one. What an amazing blessing marriage is. What a wonderful gift it is that you've given to us. We pray, Father, that you would bless this ceremony. Thank you so much for the weather and the rain holding off for tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would just surround this wonderful couple with your love, with your grace, with your wisdom, and your guidance. Thank you so much for all that are gathered together here tonight. For family and friends that have prayed for, encouraged, and supported these two up to this point, and will continue to do so as they begin this wonderful journey together. Father, may you be glorified in all that is said and done. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Who gives this woman to be married? My brother and I do. Amen. You may receive your bride. Amen. And as we look back into the Word of God, we see the foundation for the marriage in which you guys are embarking upon today. In the book of Genesis, we see that God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the bread of life, and man became a living soul. From man's side, God created woman. And I love that picture from Genesis because I believe that's the picture of marriage. Woman is not to be over her husband to rule him, nor under his feet to be ruled by him, but by his side, encouraging, supporting, and connected together. Man is seen in scripture as the provider, the protector. Man is not to walk all over his mate, but to love and protect and support his mate. Woman in scripture is considered the helpmate, and what a wonderful title that is. That word means that Jeff cannot be what God has designed him to be without you by his side. You are the completer. You are the one that is there for him to make him all that God has for him to be. In Scripture, we read what true love is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we read that love suffers long. Love is kind. Love envies not. Love does not boast and is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemly and seeks not its own. It thinks no evil. Love is not easily provoked. And love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As you begin this journey today, trust in the love that you have for one another. The love you have is not just an emotion. It's not just a feeling. It's a commitment that you're making together today. And I believe God will honor that commitment. In Ephesians chapter 5, we continue to read the beauty of marriage. Christ and his love for the church is the picture of what human marriage represents as you join together today, you represent the love that Christ had for his church in so much that he gave himself for her. Jeff, the Bible says that as a husband, you are to love your wife as Christ loved the church. And Emma, as the wife, you are to submit to your husband. And that word today doesn't have a positive picture. But that word really means to honor, to support, and to listen to Jeff as he loves and honors you in Christ. Jeff and Emma, we are gathered together here in the sights of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join the two of you together in a sacred covenant that God himself has designed. Your marriage is intended to join you in a life and indeed in a relationship so intimate and personal that it will change your whole being. It offers you the hope and indeed the promise of a love that is true and mature. To attain to such a love, you will have to commit yourselves one to another freely and gladly for the sake of a richer and deeper life together. My word of encouragement to you is let God be your helper and show you what that looks like. Jeff and Emma, you have made it known that you want to be joined in marriage. I'm going to ask that you would face each other and join hands. Uh, 
It's all right. He needs them. His hands are sweaty. <laughs> Jeff, would you repeat after me to Emma? Emma, I take you to be my wife. Emma, I take you to be my wife. To laugh with you in joy. To laugh with you in joy. To grieve with you in sorrow. To grieve with you in sorrow. To grow with you in love. To grow with you in love. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Jeff, God has given Emma to you to make you complete. You are not marrying her today to make her what you think you need, but allowing her strengths and her weaknesses to help you, to support and encourage you to be all that God has for you. Emma, in the same way, God has given you Jeff today to encourage you and support you to be all that you need him to be for you. Will you repeat after me to Jeff? Jeff, I take you to be my husband. Jeff, I take you to be my husband. To laugh with you in joy. I'm sorry, what? To laugh with you in joy. To laugh with you in joy. To grieve with you in sorrow. To grieve with you in sorrow. To grow with you in love. To grow with you in love. As long as we both shall live. May I have the rings, please? <laughs> Jeff, inasmuch as it is the man who gives his name to his wife, I give this to you first. Please place it on her wedding, wedding finger and repeat after me to Emma. <laughs> All right, go ahead and hold on to them. As a pledge, as a pledge, and in token, and in token, of the vows between us made, of the vows between us made, with this ring, with this ring, I thee wed, I thee wed, Emma, I give you this to place on his wedding <laughs> finger. Repeat after me to Jeff. As a pledge, as a pledge, and in token, and in token, of the vows between us made, of the vows between us made, with this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. At this time, the couple would like to celebrate their union with a unity ceremony. Uh, I'm going to take just a quick moment and explain what they're doing this, this evening. Uh, it's not a normal unity candle, uh, but Jeff and Emma have made it known that they have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And they believe that relationship is not just for them individually, but for them together as a couple as well. And so tonight, they're going to be doing a braiding ceremony. And what this represents is a three-corded braid to represent themselves individually and their relationship with Christ. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says this in the Word of God, And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. In your marriage, Christ is not just part of your marriage. He is the core and the center of your marriage. And if you will keep in mind what you're doing tonight in this ceremony for the rest of your marriage, you will see great and tremendous things in your marriage. And they're going to take time right now to do this ceremony together. I'm going to ask that we would bow for a word of prayer and ask a tremendous blessing over this marriage and this union. Father, we thank you so much that in your word it is clear to us 
that human marriage, this relationship we're joining in this evening, that Jeff and Emma are embarking upon, and that we get to witness, is the greatest picture, you tell us, of your love for us. That, Lord Jesus, over 2,000 years ago, you came to this world. You left the realms of glory, took on the form of flesh, lived a sinless life, died on a sinner's cross, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and rose again on the third day, so that anyone who places their faith and trust in you for the forgiveness of sins, repenting of their sin and turning to you, surrendering your life to you, receiving your grace, can find eternal life, forgiveness, and just a peace that is beyond all understanding. Tonight, we celebrate this marriage as a picture of what you did for us, the amount of love you have for us because you sacrificed everything for us. Not because you had to, but because you chose to out of your great love for us. And I pray that you would be with Jeff and Emma as they embark on this journey. You would fill them with your love. That in the coming weeks, months, and years, as life happens, ups and downs, I pray that you would prepare their hearts today for all that they're going to need. I pray that they would lean into one another, rest in one another for strength, support, and security. But ultimately, Lord, I pray that they would lean on you and your wisdom. I thank you for their faith in you that is evidence to us. And we pray that you would bless them in a mighty way. Give them great joys, much laughter, and much peace. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for this wonderful celebration. And I pray that we, as witnesses to this, will gather around them, encourage them, and lift them up, celebrating marriage with them. We love you, Lord, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. For as much as Jeff and Emma have consented together in holy marriage and have witnessed the same before God in this company and thereto have given and pledged their faith to each other, and have declared the same by giving and receiving of rings and by the joining of hands, by the power vested in me in the, by the state of Michigan and the word of God, I declare that they are husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Jeff, are you, are you ready? Okay. You may kiss your bride. Would you turn and face the audience, please? I take tremendous pleasure in being the first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Jeff Proctor. You guys may go. Let's go ahead. Go ahead, guys. This can go ahead. Go ahead, guys. All right, guys, just wait just a minute. Go ahead, guys. Go on down, guys. Go ahead. <laughs> on behalf of Jeff and Emma and all the family, thank you so much.